I'm Connor Northrup. I'm joined by lightweight prospect Eddie George. What's up, Eddie? What's going on, brother? How you doing? Thanks for taking time to speak with me. Yeah, no, thanks for joining us. I mean, it looks like you're, you're in the, the wilderness. The hair's looking good. <laughs> yeah, you know, this quarantine mullet had to, you know, grow a couple more inches. Well, <laughs> I'm ready to step into a cage so I can let the whole world see it. It's been a while since so I got to show it off. Yeah. And you just like say it too, like it's been a while since you got to show it off. I mean, you had that, you started off, you know, 2020, I mean, with a big bang, 21 second TKO victory too at CES in your pro debut. I mean, what's it been like to kind of start the year that way and then kind of to now with like all these like limitations, everything that's going on with the pandemic? Um, it's been a challenge. Uh, luckily, right after, like a month after I had my uh, debut, my uh, my first child was born. I had a daughter. She was born in February, so um, we were playing for that. So I was planning on taking the gas off just a little bit after my debut, so I could you know spend the first like month and a half with her and uh, you know enjoy fatherhood. Um, and I was planning on getting back, trying to fight again shortly after that, you know March, April, um, and then pandemic hit and that kind of put a halt on everything. So. I got to enjoy being a father, you know, more than I thought I would, you know, spending more time home. But I've still been busy, man. I'm, I'm in shape. I'm, I'm, my weight's looking good. I, to be honest, I can make weight next week for uh, 55, no problem. Uh, I'm still, uh, still going. My coach is uh, making sure I'm getting all my, my work in. Yeah. So I mean, is it safe to say, like you said too, like definitely some positives have come out of this? Yeah, definitely positive. You know, I got to, you know, like I said, enjoy fatherhood. Uh, especially my first child, but, you know, still at the same time, very frustrating because I'm a guy that, you know, if I'm healthy, I want to be very active. And with CES, I, I was wanting to stay very active with them. I, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to fight six times this year. Like, I'm going to crush it, you know, try to win the CES title and look for a contender series right, right around the corner. Um, so as far as, you know, my, my step is stone gold. It's frustrating because it's put a halt on that, but I, you know, I'm not losing focus. I'm still grinding. I'm still working, staying in shape. Yeah. And first off, too, congrats on being a father, too. I mean, that's great. Thank you, brother. Yeah. But, like, with everything going on, too, I mean, I saw on your Twitter you still have it on there. I think you said, you know, a future you know, UFC prospect or, or something like that uh, by summer 2021. I mean, do you still feel like that's a uh, achievable goal with, with everything that's happened and kind of postponing, I guess, some fights? You know, maybe it's just my head in the clouds, but I do. Um, I try to uh, I try to stay in close contact, you know, with, with CES um, on my own. Of course, my management team, uh, Top Game Management, they, they speak to CES for me and we're always working on stuff and trying to find out when the, when they can hold their next show. But um, I also have a good uh, relationship with the promotion as well. So um, there, there's no talk of any shows right now. I know they're working on it, but I, I'm confident that, you know, that I'll be able to get, you know, my, my, you know, three, four, five fights, whatever I need to get in by the time, you know, summer next year. I, I'm, like I said, I like stay active so once they get the shows up going and the ball's rolling i'm full steam ahead yeah just from your conversations like with, with some of the people there too i mean do you have like any idea with like when you like even in your head you might think like a, a date like i mean two three months from now do you think that's kind of a, a possibility for their next card yeah um they they haven't said anything now they haven't even given like a little teaser or nothing like that yeah. like, oh, we're, no, we're working on it we're working on it because the thing with them they're it's not just that in one state so they have you know different commission athletic commissions different safety protocols for each state you know so it's it's kind of it's kind of tough you know they they're in connecticut they're in uh rhode island i think they do shows in uh, massachusetts as well so around the new england area so you know each state they have their own regulations and stuff so I think that's the main holdup. If it was, you know, their home base was just one state, then it might mm -hmm. be a little bit easier. But with the moving around, uh, I'm guessing, of course. I don't know that for a fact. Yeah. For you, too, I mean, is CES, is, is that the only place you really want to fight for, like, before you get to UFC? Or have you looked at maybe other promotions that are starting up quicker? Um, to be honest, I, I love the CES promotion. Um, 
Jimmy Jr., Senior, great guys. You know, all, all those people there uh, sit before I made my debut, you know, they, they decided to take me under their wing and, you know, help me, uh, help me start my pro career. You know, they stuck, stuck by me, did me right. So I'm, I'm looking to stay, you know, with CES. And also I, I committed to, uh, you know, fighting with them exclusively. I signed a sick fight deal with them, um, in the very beginning. So I, I gotta, you know, honor that, but also even if it wasn't like that, I, I probably would stick by them because, you know, they, they're good guys and, you know, it's, it's good to be loyal to who helps you out in the beginning. For sure. Like, what what also, like, stood out about CES, too? Because, I mean, six fights, I mean, that's obviously, like, a, a pretty, like, long contract, too. Like, what was it about them that stood out that, you know, you were like, all right, this is a place I want to fight for? Man, it's, uh, for one, I, I feel like the CES world title, that, that's a legit world title, my That's, you know, they, they have, in the past, they, they you know, Rob Bont, Calvin Cater, who's fighting on the 15th, yeah. just, you know, a few like two names I could keep going of course yeah. but you know like they they they're a great promotion you know like fighting and winning a belt for them is a big deal to me but also they they're able to put me on a platform to bring me to where I want to go for my overall goals you know which is getting into UFC being a champion in the UFC and uh being successful at that so I I realized that you know I could be one of those guys that just promotion hops and goes here goes there any regional uh, card or go to CES one show, LFA one show, but I, I feel like guys like that they're just jump on any wave that they can. I I rather be the one that just has that same wave and just builds momentum all the way through, and then I can just do whatever I want because I build I build stuff to what that makes. Yeah. <laughs> And then also, too, like, you know, since you haven't fought since uh, January, so I guess like five, six months now, too, like, uh, how, how much have you progressed, too? I mean, obviously, I know training has been kind of, I guess, held back a little bit, but with everything yeah. going on, too, like, I, I mean, how much progress have you made in that time? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm so green, man, that I could just, naturally, I soak everything up like a sponge. I've, I haven't been in a game as long as most guys are in my shoes have been so people that you know just made their debut or you know two two fights into the pro debut or they, they've been training for you know five plus years seven years eight years whatnot i've only been training i just closed in on three years um so i i, I don't want to sound arrogant but i i picked up pretty naturally um you know i feel like some people they could just fight i'm i'm one of those guys that can just fight and then when you get blessed enough to have a, a great team behind you and a great coach that can show you the skill set to go along with that natural talent, it sky's the limit. I, I feel like I progress and I level up so fast because of that reason. So, yeah, I've, I've leveled up in this quarantine time. Um, I focus a lot on my cardio, a lot more solo stuff, um, a lot of road work. My, my cardio is on point. Um, and the few times I've gone with people, uh, I'm able to keep that heavy pressure and you know, people are out of shape right now. So I don't, I don't know if it's my car is that really that, that good <laughs> or they're just getting tired uh, easier. But I'm uh, I'm not fatigued now in the practice room. I'm putting a vicious pace on people. And my striking is always getting better because Nick Newell is, you know, one of the best in the game. And he puts a lot of time in the game. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, just that debut, too. Just talk me through it. I mean, what, what was that like, too? Because, I mean – you probably could have like written that much better than you know yourself. What for the? Oh, your pro debut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. To be honest, I didn't think it was gonna happen that fast. Uh, <laughs> really, I, I was I was in the back and I just felt good. I was calm, very very chill, and I was I just in my mind I was like, this is my time. I, I love being under the lights. Uh, I'm not someone that like gets nervous like oh people watch me I, I had a big crowd um come out i, I sold I can't remember. I, but i didn't sell tickets. i sold like close to 100 tickets for you know mm -hmm. being out of state I, that's pretty good yeah um, so i had a, a good bit of people come and um uh, and cs has a big show all the time i don't know but once i got into that cage it, it was such a great cage and everything just clicked um, I felt super fast, and I just feel like 
no disrespect to him, but he's not on my level, and I don't I don't feel like a lot of these up and comers and regional guys are on my level. Um, um, I'm very skilled, and then where I lack in skill, my mind and my heart can take me that much further. Yeah, and honestly, like there's been some like missed time too with everything happening, like. Uh, if this pandemic like wasn't a thing, I mean, how many times would you have liked to have fought by by like where we are now? Um. Well, I I was supposed to fight. CS was gonna have another card in April. I think it was like April twenty fourth in Rhode Island, and they were talking about putting me on there. And then they're like, "Oh no, we're gonna have a car, another card right after that, in like May fifteenth, fifteenth or fourteenth. It was a Friday, and that was gonna be in uh, Connecticut." So I was guaranteed to fight on that Connecticut card because, you know, knowing that I have a good following, mm-hmm. um, they, they really wanted to, you know, help me out with packing in the house with people uh, fighting locally. Um, so I would have at least been – had two fights on my belt. I'd have been 2-0 at least. Hopefully I would have been 3-0 by now, but it is what it yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, and then also, too, I mean, going in your next fight, too, that, that will be like your first fight, at, you know, as a father, too, like – uh, having a child too, and just like another mouth to feed too. Does, does that give you any like extra motivation, kind of on, on a competitive level? Um, I don't want to sound like an asshole. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it does. I, I I love my daughter very much. You know, like I I love being a father, but at the end of the day, I I'm just a fighter. Um, and my motivation level doesn't change for anybody. Um, I you know I don't want to sound like an ass. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's honest answer, yeah. <laughs> She's watching the kid while I'm doing the interviews. <laughs> but, um, I, I love my daughter very much, but I, I fight hard because that's what I love to do, and that's my passion. I fight because I want to be the best, um, and that's what motivates me is just solely to be the best in the world. Um, no outside influences help with that. I just want to yeah. be great. And just like by the, like what you just said too, and like having that passion, like just to compete too. I mean, does that like does this pandemic only kind of make you hungrier for that too? That because like you said, you know, you might have missed out on one, you know, two fights right now. Yeah, it definitely makes me hungrier. I I feel like everyone's kind of hungry because they've been like cooped up in the house, mm-hmm. so everyone's like, oh, like new me, I'm about to come back better than ever, come back better than ever. I, I see a lot of it on social media, um, all the platforms. But I, I feel a lot of it is just people are capping. People are just saying – it's just all words. Um, it's kind of like that New Year's resolution, you know. December, everyone gets fat. January 1st, everyone's <laughs> like, oh, back in the gym. New year, new me. Yeah. And then, like, where are they at? The end of the month, where are they at 90 days later? So I feel it's kind of the same thing where a lot of people are saying, oh, this, like, motivated me more than ever. I'm coming back. But let's see where those people are. Three months from now, I, I'm I'm not one of those guys. I, I I've been in the gym. I, I haven't left the gym. That's why I'm in fight shape still. It's perfect, like I said. So I feel like I'm one of the rare few that's still as motivated, if not more motivated than ever. Yeah. Is there anyone on the regional scene that you kind of have your eye on that you would like to fight? Mm. No. <laughs> um, I mean. I'm kind of a sick. I want to fight everybody. <laughs> my, my coach has to tell me to chill out all the time. Um, but you know, nah, like as far as like names go, I, I don't. I don't really like. I don't really care about these guys. Like, I feel like just bring them. Yeah. If they're, if they're on the regional scene, then I'll take them out. If they're on the regional scene, they already know who I am from when I came up in the amateur ranks. Like. I already made my statement there. Amateurs don't mean shit. Uh, excuse my language. Amateurs don't okay. mean any. Amateurs don't mean anything. But um, if if there was people on the amateur scene that I had my eyes on, I cleared them out b- before I became a pro, uh, because I wanted to focus on fighting the best people early in my career, test myself, test my will, test my heart, my skill, um, because amateurs don't mean anything. It's when you become a pro, it's clean slate so why not fight the hardest guys as an amateur locally um that's how i approached my career my coach you know had me approach my career that way so now as a pro there's no one really on the regional scene where i'm like 
oh, I'm really gunning for this guy. Um, yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, anything uh, you want to say before I let you go? Um, yes, let's get a, let's get a show going. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, uh, Jim Jr., Jim Sr., let's make it happen. I'm hungry. Uh, my kid need to eat. <laughs> uh, shout out to FAA. Um, Milford and Springfield, best gym in New England. Shout out to Top Game Management, best management team around. And that's about it. If you ain't with the team, you lunch. <laughs> All right, Eddie, thank you so much for uh, joining us, and I wish you the best. Thank you, Connor. I appreciate you taking time talking, bud. All right, yeah. Take care. Have a good one.